Hi everyone, we are back with another video in the Transformer series. In this video, we'll cover flash attention, which is a major advancement in the development of LLMs. So let's get started. In a previous video, we have discussed that the complexity of dot product attention is quadratic with respect to sequence length, which causes difficulty in increasing the context length. We have also covered some approximate algorithms that achieve linear complexity like the Lorang approximation algorithm. However, these methods often do not result in an actual speedup. You may ask how come we make an algorithm run in linear complexity but still no speedup compared to a quadratic algorithm. The reason is those algorithms were only focusing on reducing the computational complexity, whereas the major bottleneck of the attention algorithm may not be its arithmetic complexity. In fact, as we'll see in this video, with modern GPUs, the major bottleneck of dot product attention is the overhead cost of memory access. The key idea of flash attention is to avoid reading and writing the full attention matrix to the GPU DRAM. This will result in significant reduction on the overhead cost of memory access and speeds up the training time for BERT, uh, GPT-2 and other transformer models and LLMs. However, there are two challenges that uh, flash attention needs to address in order to avoid storing the full attention metrics in the memory. The first challenge is that we need to calculate the softmax without storing the entire attention score matrix or QK transpose. To solve this challenge, flash attention uses a tiling mechanism that gradually computes the output of attention. The second challenge is related to the backward pass for computing the gradients. And to resolve this challenge, flash attention, instead of storing the entire attention scores in memory, it recomputes the attention output. But to make the recomputation easier, uh, it stores the normalization values for computing softmax from the forward pass. Before we see the flash attention algorithm, it's important to understand the basics of GPU structure with different memory levels and execution flow. This diagram shows a simplified view of GPU memories. On the bottom, we have the DRAM, which stands for Dynamic Random Access Memory. DRAM is the largest memory in a GPU, but also the slowest one. There are many different types of DRAM, like SDRAM, GDDR in the RTX series, and HBM that stands for High Bandwidth Memory, and is used for high-performance applications and LLMs. Arithmetic computations are performed at Streaming Multiprocessors, or SMs for short. The L1 cache is a small but very fast memory located within each uh, streaming multiprocessor. The L2 cache is larger than L1 and serves as an intermediate layer for memory between the DRAM and the L1 cache. Both L1 and L2 are referred to as SRAM or Static Random Access Memory. As an example, let's examine the A100 GPU. The A100 is equipped with 108 streaming multiprocessors and features a 40 MB L2 cache. In terms of DRAM, it has 80 GB of HBM2 with a memory bandwidth of 2000 GB per second. For computing a mathematical function on a vector or matrix data, we have to load chunks of data from DRAM to SRAM and then the SMs will execute the computation with multiple threads in parallel. And once the computation is finished, the results are stored back in the DRAM. So this execution model requires accessing the DRAM twice, once for reading the data, and then again for storing the results. This may not be a problem if the actual computation is heavy or at least heavier than uh, accessing the memory, but for designing an efficient algorithm on a GPU, first we need to understand if the function that we want to calculate on a particular GPU is compute-bound or memory-bound. Let's assume we want to compute function uh, y equals f of x. And as a simplification, we can say that the total time for performing the mathematical operation is uh, t math, and the time for all the memory accesses is t mem. And since the memory access and computation can be overlapped, the total time is a max of t mem and t math. If t math is greater than t mem, we say that this process is compute bound. Otherwise, it will be uh, memory bound. Now let's look at the dot product attention and see where its bottleneck is. As we already know, for dot product attention, we multiply the matrix Q with the matrix K transpose, and Q has size n by d, and K transpose has size d by n, where n is the length of the sequence. 
This multiplication results in this attention score matrix with size n by n. n can be as large as the context length of the model. For example, for GPT-2, it can be as large as 1024. And that means the attention score matrix is 1024 by 1024. When we use PyTorch functions for computing the attention scores, after computation, the results will be transferred to DRAM. And this, in fact, is the bottleneck in computing the dot product attention. Let's look at the execution of the attention in a GPU. In the first step, Q and K are transferred from DRAM to SRAM, computing the attention score S equals QK transpose, and then the results is transferred back to the DRAM. Then in the second step, we load the matrix S to SRAM and apply the softmax, and then we transfer the results back to DRAM again for the next step. So this process requires loading and storing the large n by n matrix three times to get the final attention output. Flash attention recognizes this bottleneck and tries to compute the attention output without storing these large n by n matrices. Flash attention significantly reduces the memory access using a tiling approach that computes the output of attention partially in two nested for loops. Furthermore, for backward pass, it's more efficient to simply recompute the attention as long as we have stored the normalization factors of softmax for each row. First, we need to reformulate the softmax equation. Given this vector x, which could be a row of the attention score matrix, we want to compute the softmax. Applying softmax to x results in a vector where each element i is calculated as exp of xi divided by the sum of the exp of all elements. The denominator is the normalization factor. Now, if we multiply both sides and uh, the numerator and the denominator by exp of minus m, the results will not change. So let's use the m to be the maximum value of the input vector x. This can be further simplified as shown here by merging the two exponential functions. Now we can reformulate softmax with two intermediate steps as follows. We calculate vector f of x to be e to the power of xi minus m for all elements in x, and the denominator will be the sum over vector f. With these two intermediate steps, we can compute softmax to be f of x divided by the normalization factor L of x. Now, the critical question is how can we compute softmax blockwise? So imagine we have a vector x which is divided into two blocks, and for each block, the maximum value, the vector f, and the normalization factor L are computed. To calculate softmax for the concatenated vector x, we first compute the overall max that is the max of m1 and m2, and then we adjust vectors f1 and f2 as well as the normalization factors uh, according to the overall max value. Finally, softmax is calculated by the adjusted vector f of x divided by uh, the adjusted normalization factor L of x. With that uh, theoretical reformulation of softmax, now we are ready for flash attention. Given input matrices Q, K, and V, flash attention first initializes two helper vectors M and L, both of size N, as well as initializing the output matrix O, since we are going to update that matrix uh, incrementally. We make blocks of the Q, K, and V matrices based on the size of SRAM. Here, i is the index of block uh, for q, and j is the index for blocks of k and v. Using blocks qi and kj, we first compute the attention scores uh, sij as qi times kj transpose. And then we compute the max of each row, followed by the matrix fij as exp of uh, sij minus m, and the normalization factors as the sum of each row of fij. Then we adjust the overall max and the normalization factors. The equations for those are not shown here for the sake of space, but you can find them in the paper. And finally, we use the adjusted vectors along with block uh, Vj to make a partial update to the block I of output matrix O as shown in this final equation. Now we perform two loops with the block for Kj and Vj as the outer loop and the inner loop is over all blocks of Q. For the fixed blocks kj and vj in the outer loop, we take block uh, q1 and compute s1j and update the blocks m1, l1, as well as o1. Then we move to the second block q2 and make updates to m2, l2, and o2. 
And we continue similarly for all the blocks uh, in Q in the inner loop. And uh, we repeat this for all blocks of J. And uh, once the outer loop is finished, the final matrix O is the output of the attention. Flash attention computes the exact attention, not an approximate attention. While the number of arithmetic operations are higher than the standard attention, but the advantage comes with the significant reduction of memory accesses to the HBM. Comparing the number of HBM memory accesses in the naive algorithm with flash attention, we get a big O of ND plus N squared for the naive algorithm and big O of N squared D squared divided by M, where M is the size of SRAM. On modern GPU, the typical size of SRAM is about 100 kilobyte, which is much larger than D squared. So flash attention has significantly reduced the number of memory accesses and as a result, it is able to accelerate the training of LLMs. Here in the first table, we see the training time for GPT-2 small and GPT-2 medium. And we can see that flash attention has uh, reduced the training time of GPT-2 medium from 21 days to under 7 days, so 3 times faster. Furthermore, another advantage is that now we can increase the context length, which also results in higher quality models. And with that, we can wrap up this video. Please feel free to leave your comments and suggestions and subscribe to future videos from PyML Studio.